Hi and welcome to another video by me, Joe Onwin, also known as Flow Joe. Today we are going to be looking at Copilot Studio and how we can use prompts to get a information that's been retrieved from generative answers back in a bullet point list. So if you haven't seen my previous video, I've gone through and shown you how you can reduce a huge amount of text that comes back from generative AI, also known as generative answers in Copilot Studio, to less than 500 characters or less than any amount of characters that you wish. And we're going to be using a similar approach now to actually change the generative response into a bullet point list. Why would we do this then? Well, let's think about it. Let's say we have a person asking for information on your website and your website provides information on how to fix an item. You are trying to stop that individual from going to a customer service representative if they can fix it themselves. Therefore, rather than give them an entire wall of text, you're going to want to give them bite-sized bullet points and step-by-step -step guides to be able to fix this. Now, a good example of this type of situation is that say you've got a mobile device and you want to fix your mobile device rather than having to work out who you've got to talk to or something like that. If you ask a co-pilot and say, my iPhone is broken. It's not doing something in particular. What you may just need to do is restart your iPhone for it to work. Now, rather than waste a customer services representative's time and effort, you can offload that to the co-pilot. So if you've got guides on your website that gives this information, you're going to want to provide that information to the user in an easy to follow step-by-step -step process. Step one, hold the off button on your phone. Step two, turn it back on. Step three, go to settings. Step four, do and so on and so on and so on, right? If this is all in just a big lot of text given to the user, like just thrown in front of the user, they're likely to think, well, that's a lot of information. I'm not being able to follow it easily. And they will probably just try to escalate there and then. So if you can reduce this and actually give them information in a bullet point list, that's going to be able to be so much easier to follow, then this is going to be significantly better for yourself, your customer service representatives, as well as the end user. Okay, so let's take a look at an example then. Now, I'm using an example that I've created in a previous video called uh, Build a Copilot for Your Website. Go check that out if you want to work out how I've done this for my blog but I have essentially got a co-pilot pointing at my blog and I have custom prompts and I've got an example topic here. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with co-pilot, topics are essentially where you can create paths, like manual paths that follow a step-by-step -step process. So you'll have a trigger, which will be a phrase. So in this instance here, uh, my phrase is test. Now, test here, essentially will kick off this topic. Then I'm asking a question, what do you want to ask? So then the person will ask their question. I'm capturing that and then I'm using generative answers. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm showing you that generative answers works in manual topics. So if you're creating a topic and you want to use generative AI, you can do that. However, if you don't want to do that and you want to just universally do it across your platform and your co-pilot, if you go into topics and plugins system and then you go to conversational boosting, in here is the generative answers for the on unknown intent. So if someone just randomly asks a question that you don't have a topic that covers it, it will always land in this system topic. So you will be able to modify it here. And now what I'm going to show you in the example in the manual topic, you can also do directly here as well so that you can handle all unknown intent in exactly the same way. OK, so let's go back. We are going to use this example topic. And as I mentioned before, we've got our test phrase, we've got our question and then we've got our generative answers. Now, 
This is just all plain. I've not added anything to this. All I've done is I've added the test phrase, I've added the question, I've captured the response, and I've pointed it at a data source, which is my blog, www.flowjo.io. So I'm not doing any additional work here. This is very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say test, and then I'm just going to say, okay, well, how do I easily avoid apply to each loops in Power Automate? So it's a very simple question, right? How do I easily avoid apply to each loops in Power Automate? Now I know because I've uh, created my blog that I've got information on there. So if I press enter here, it will go away to my blog, gather that information and return it. And you can see here I've got uh, a couple of different links as references and it's given me a summary in text. It says you can easily avoid apply to each loops in Power Automate by doing this, by doing that and so on and so on and so on. I won't read it all out for you, but as you can see there, it's a giant paragraph of text with some references. So if I, in our example, wanted to break down this into bullet points to make it easier to read, how do I do that? Well, firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my generative answers node. I'm going to click on this three dots here to open the node menu. I'm going to click properties. And then in the custom functions, this is where I'm going to add my prompt engineering uh, aspect to it. So you can create custom prompts in here to say how you want the generative AI to react to the information that it retrieves. So it's going to retrieve the information, it's going to summarize it, but you can add additional prompts to that to actually increase, decrease the amount that's there or change into bullet points or something similar, right? You could even say, um, be more formal or things like that, but that's for other videos. So what we're focusing on right now is how do we get this load of information over here into a bullet point list. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say summarize this list, so this response into a bullet point, uh, let's have a space between that, list. So if I now go from here and I decide, okay, well, I've got a load of information. I want to summarize the response that it gets back and I want it into a bullet point list. So if I hit save now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy the exact same question that they asked previously. I'm gonna hit refresh, type test to trigger this. As you can see here, we're at this stage we're asking what the question is. So I'm going to ask exactly the same question. How do I easily avoid apply to each loops in Power Automate? Now, as you can see, it's given me a um, response of steps and it's also given me a summarized bullet point list of the information. So this has given me a lot more information now than that uh, paragraph that we had but it's given me in a bullet point list. So to easily avoid apply to each loops in Power Automate, you can follow these steps. And as I mentioned before, let's say you was trying to fix a mobile device, this will be so much easier to follow than trying to read through a paragraph of text, make sure that you're at the correct location. You just do step one, step two, step three, step four. Step one, retrieve the first and or subsequent rows without needing to the apply to each action. Okay, so you can go there. Instead of cycling through them uh, time consuming process, you can simply avoid them and speed up your flows. Okay, cool. So this can be achieved by using alternative methods. Okay, so it's not really giving me much information. It's just telling me the benefits right now. By implementing these methods, this is, uh, this is what you get. You get a streamlined power automate flow. Cool, so what can I actually do then? Here's a summarized bullet point list. Retrieve the first here, avoid time consuming process here, use filters on your conditions, and so on. Now, 
this didn't give me exactly what I want because it didn't give me a how to. How do I actually do that? It's given me bullet points on the benefits. It's given me summarizations of um, what it can actually achieve. So let's go back to our properties then. So I've got summarize this response into a bullet point list. Maybe that's not what I should ask. Maybe I should say something like, do not summarize the response. Only give me the steps in a single bullet point list. So if I hit save now, I'm going to ask the same question. So I'm going to copy that, do test and press enter. So let's see what we get back this time. So now it comes back um, with more detailed information in a step by step list. Now, the reason why it wasn't giving me specific step by step guides on exactly how to achieve this is because my information on my site is video based. So it's going to summarize the information of what I've put there to say what's in my video and it's not going to summarize my entire video, right? So the previous example where you saw it was like, okay, this is the benefits, all of that. It was trying to create a bullet point list based on information that I was requesting that it didn't specifically have access to. However, I told it that it needed to create that bullet point list. So this is where you need to remember that good information in equals good information out. Now, obviously my blog, has a lot of videos compared to specifically blog posts. So when I've now changed this to say, just um, just actually do not summarize it, just give me a list, right? Just tell me the specific information in a list format. It's saying, okay, well, to easily avoid apply to each loops in Power Ultimate, you can follow these steps. One, watch the video. So it knows that it's got a video there. It's, it knows that it's going to have the information that I requested in it because I've given a summary on that page about that and it's pointed me to where the video is and it tells you what's actually in the video, what you're actually going to learn. In the video, you will learn how to retrieve the first and or subsequent uh, rows without needing the apply to each action. Now, if you can remember moments ago when we looked at the other one that was really long with all those bullet point lists, it was giving me this information, but it was trying to make out that this was the specific step because that's what I was trying to force it to do. But it did have information on what you're going to learn, which is this, but it just didn't have the specific information on how to achieve that. But now it's actually giving me that information by telling me you need to watch this video. And then it gives me a summarization of by implementing these techniques shown in the video, you can avoid time consuming processes and speed up your flows. And then it's given me the reference link. So you can easily sum, uh, like change it to say, just give me a bullet point list, but you need to understand the content that you're working with as well as what you're trying to achieve. Now I went through an example there where it works well, this example, because I've said, don't try and basically give me a step-by-step -step guide, just avoid the summary and give me a list. So do not summarize the response as if it was a guide, only give me the steps in a single bullet point list, which it has done here. And it's just give me the introduction and the outro, right? This works really well. Previously, where I was trying to force it to do something where it didn't have the information, you can see it just didn't work great. I was reading it through. I was like, okay, well, this isn't giving me the guide. This isn't giving me the steps and it wasn't achieving what I wanted it to do. So it's very important to understand what information you're working with, what you're trying to achieve, and then how you approach your custom instructions or your custom prompts in Copilot Studio. I hope this helps. I will put each of these prompts in the description below. Leave a like and a comment if you have any questions to help my channel grow. I really appreciate you watching if you've made it to the end of the video and I'll see you next time. Bye.